John 14, 6 says this, that Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Right off the bat, he's, he, he's telling his, his boys, listen, guys, the way that we're going to travel is a way that nobody else has ever done this before. Matter of fact, you guys are going to rock a culture. Everything that's going on inside this culture, you guys are going to kick against it. You're going to rock it. You're going to shake it, Kelly. You're going to move it. You're going to, be, you, you're going to begin to move all these things. And as you do this, people's going to get upset. They're not going to like you. And that every, you know what? That's okay. That's okay. So I truly believe in my heart and with everything that is within me that, guys, we're going to do some things, not only here within this house, but I, I truly believe it's going to start. It, it has started in the house, but now it's time to take it outside of the house. Yeah. Yeah. It's time, to, it's time to get it out there and, and, and listen to me. If they have hated him, they have, they're probably not going to like what you're doing either. Because listen, anytime you begin to step against a culture, anytime you begin to step against superstition, anytime you begin to step against anything that people are used to, I mean, we're human. We don't like change. Well, I, I come in here every week. Two times a week, and I sit in that chair right there. That's my chair. Don't sit in my chair. Okay? If, if you sit in my chair, I got a crazy little Latina girl right there that will... No, she won't. I'll move. But what I'm saying is, me and, me and the apostle was talking about that, too. I, I, I was pointing. I was talking about my brother, Levi. I was talking about Ryan. Uh, well, Ryan Flynn. And I pointed, just like I just did, at, at the chair, because that's... Ryan ain't here, but that's, that's, that's Ryan's chair, you know, and I know where each and every one of y'all sit. Just from standing up here and preaching, I know, I, I can tell who is and who ain't here when I'm up here speaking or when I'm walking around on the Sunday morning greeting people, I know who is and who ain't here by the chairs that are empty because we are creatures of habit. So if me being born again and y'all being born again are creatures of habit, you better believe they are too. And when we, as born-again believers, go out and begin to come against those habits, yeah. begin to come against those systems, begin to try to rock and shake things, you best believe we're going to ruffle some feathers. We're going to make some people upset. We're going to make some people mad. And, and, and Jesus says, you know what? That's okay. That's okay. Because as long as we are seeking the kingdom principles, as long as we're going out and we're seeking the kingdom, I was telling uh, um, my brother Levi and, 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 and Apostle Dan that uh, <clears throat> I've, I've been playing phone tag within this week on, uh, with the principal out at Degger School. They, uh, they lost their head football coach. And I told Jocelyn, I said, uh, you know, I mean, what, what better way with the burden that's been laid upon my heart for, for not only just the, the little ones and, and but, I mean, why not go out there and try to sow my heart into some high school kids? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I said, uh, I told her, I said, uh, you know, and, and the crazy thing about it was last year during the football season, the athletic director approached me. I had never said anything to anybody about, I mean, you know, I mean, y'all know me. I, I like kids in doses, you know. I mean, I, I can handle them to a certain extent, but I've never been one to say, man, I'm called to the youth room. You know, I've never been one to say that I, I, I'm, I'm going to the nursery because that's where I belong. You know, but for some reason within the last few months, that burden's been laid upon my heart. And I'm, I'm, listen to me, okay, Dandre ain't here. I'm not going to the nursery, okay? I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not saying that I'm called to go here in the house and go begin to, to do youth group things, and, and which I get to, thank God, because my wife's a part of it. I like playing with those crazy kids. But I told my wife, I said, what better way for me to sow my heart into not only the youth, but into this community. So as I'm talking to the, the principal, I tell him, I said, uh, he's like, oh, man, I'm, I'm excited that you've, that you've called and that you're, that, you're, that you're applying for this job. He begins to tell me how, how I go about it. He said, uh, I said, now, before you get too excited, I said, let me tell you something up front. I said, I'm not interested in building your football program at all. I said, I, I don't want to build your football program. I said, the only thing that I'm interested in is building up those kids. I said, and I be truly believe with all my heart as I build kids and as I try to apply ethics and morals and good standards within those kids, 
that the Lord will bless us and he'll build the program. If I build the kids, he'll build the program. You know, and, and he began to laugh and he said, you know what? He said, that's funny that you say that. He said, because uh, something we've been hearing a lot around here lately and something that we've been saying a lot around here lately is we need a change of culture. And he said, and it's going to take somebody with a mindset like you got in order to do that. So just be believing with me that that's, that that's mine, you know, and that I'm able to, to take some, some, uh, some seeds from, from WWFG and, and plant into to, to some high school boys and, 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 and watch those kids flourish. Whether I mean, I, I don't care if they win a football game all year as long as they quit acting like hongyaks at the end of it, you know. It's just crazy to me how God's laying all these things at my lap, and it's just, it's, it's almost been secular over and over again. These things hit me over and over and over again. And everywhere that I go, it seems like that, 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 that these things uh, of, the, uh, of kids and, and the kingdom are, are, are coming upon me. I was telling Brother Ron yesterday as we was out mushroom hunting, the time I said me and Levi came out here in, uh, in early uh, uh, March, and we found a few little black morels and uh, I left them there so that they could grow and be big black morels and I come back they were gone <laughs> yeah but when I seen that they were gone I got a little bit frustrated I was like you know I mean not stomping mad throw myself on the ground throw a fit or nothing like that but I was aggravated you know my, my mushrooms were gone someone found my found my black morels and uh, the Holy Ghost said to me, he said, why are you so successful at mushroom hunting? And I was sitting there in a, in a, in a stupor because I was just like, you know, I begin to think about Papa, I begin to think about Dad, you know, they taught me, they, you know, all these things begin to come into my mind. And he says, you're successful at mushroom hunting because you're willing to go where nobody else goes. He said, and if you think you're going to be successful in ministry, if you think you're going to be successful in life or anything else that you do, you had better be willing to go. You had better be willing to do. You had better be willing to say what nobody else will. And then a week, a little over a week later, me and my wife find ourselves being called out. We went to Colorado to a, a a conference that uh, Ashley and uh, uh, help me, Carly Teredes was holding. We went to that conference and they had a prophet there. And as he's preaching, he stops and he turns around and he goes, where's, this, where, where's them Indiana people at? And me and Jocelyn get up and as, as he gets up, of course, I don't remember most of it. He laid a hand on me and I hit the floor and uh, he begins to prophesy over Jocelyn. He said, which one of y'all, he said, which one, he, or he said, who's crazier? And she goes, what? He goes, who's, who, who's crazy? Who, who's the most crazy or who's the craziest out of you two? He's like, who's willing to step out more? Who's willing to, to move in the power of God or, 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 or see the things of God happen? And, and Jocelyn says, well, I mean, he is. And he said, I'm telling you right now. He said, you're going to get crazy, honey. He said, you're going to do what you would never thought you would do and you're going to go where you never thought you would go and you're going to say things that you never thought you would yeah. say and I'm, I'm not and that's about the time I'm, I'm getting up and you know with my eyes crossed and I'm like give it to her Lord make her crazy er 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 but it was just confirmation of the, the very thing that the Lord had just sunk into my belly out in the middle of the woods when I'm, I'm just out doing what what I love to do you know that that, that, that as long as we are focused upon him as long as we are centered upon him i think of the the prophetic word that i gave on a sunday morning not too long ago i said it's going to have to be anything that we're doing is going to have to be built upon the rock it's going to have to be established upon love it's going to have to be established upon christ because if i start anything if i start a business thinking that i want to make money i've already failed it's not about making money it's about what, what, what is the purpose behind the business? You know, what, 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 because all the thing money is is a resource. If I make my goal to make an extra $20,000 a year, I've already failed. Even if I make $20,000 more a year, the word says that that money is fleeting. It'll, it'll just go. 
It'll be gone before you know it. If I don't have a purpose, if I don't have something to do with that money, if I don't have something to do with a spiritual son, if I don't, if I don't, if I don't have a direction, if I, if Grant gets to the the whatever you want to call it, the age of accountability, the you know the time where God is a, a placing the call upon his life. If I haven't done my job as a parent and Grant misses that call. Or if, even if he hears the word of the Lord and says, Dad, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to get started. I feel like I've already failed. I failed him because my job is to prepare him to go. My job is to pre- prepare him to obtain that call. But I promise you that I'm not going to prepare that young man. I'm not going to prepare Ryan or Audrey or, or anybody if I'm not willing to go on the way that God has called me. And listen, I don't have to seek the path. I don't have to seek the way. I have to seek the way. I am the way. Because even though this man has raised me in the spirit and this man has raised me in the spirit and many different influences have come in my life and I get good nuggets here and I get good nuggets there and these guys have have shown me a, a, a way. Their way is not my way. His way is not my way. If I try to do things the way that he does it, man, I am going to fall on my face and live miserable for the rest of my life. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can, I can take inspiration from my fathers. I can, I, I can look at them and, and, and aspire to someday be as successful in God or in Jesus as they are. But the minute that I try to walk their walk, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. And I'm going I'm, I'm to wake up one of these days and I'm going to find myself in a miserable situation that I am not going to know how to get out of. And it's going to be bad. It's going to be a bad, bad deal. This is what I know, church. Once again, I am in total agreement with my sister Melanie. I believe that, now I want to say this, his yoke is light and his burden is easy. But I do believe this. I believe a burden is about to settle upon us. I, I I, I smell it in the spirit. It's not just going to be within the leaders. I told, I told Brother Bob just here a while back, I don't know what, if it was a Wednesday night, a, 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 a honor to keep, I don't know when it was, but me and Bob and Levi stood right up here, and it was almost as if everybody else had left, and it was like my elbows were glued to that stage. It was a, for one, I was just sitting in the presence of God, and I looked at him, and I said, I tell you what, guys, there's going to be a remnant of the people that's going to catch this thing that's heading our way. Melanie was talking about the water. I was telling Stephanie and Levi, I said, so many times I see the, the, the wave begin to just roll off the stage and get down here. And, and, and it seemed like the first time I seen it when people was up here worshiping, they was, they was ankle deep. And I told them, I said, I'm laying in that. Yeah. You know, and I ran up here and I, I, I laid down in it, you know, and it, it didn't have nothing to do with me laying in the, the, whatever it was that I was seeing in the spirit or nothing else. But the fact is now when that wave, when that wave comes now, it's almost like I can feel that breeze that hits me in the back of the neck when I'm worshiping. And when I, when I feel that breeze, I look up and I see that wave. And now it's, I don't have to go anywhere. I just squat down right there because the water's to me now. Come on. Come on. And I truly believe, guys, as we continue to seek the true kingdom principles, continue to seek the kingdom. And we're going to come in here one of these days and we're just going to drown in the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to drown in the spirit. And I think that the Lord is building us up. And I, Lord, I think that the Lord is making a way for us so that when we open these doors, that water that's in this place is just pouring out. And as it pours out into the region, it's, 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 uh, it's going to be almost like, it's going to be infectious. It, yeah. When we go out, it's, it's going to be, uh, again, it's going to be something, I, I, I ain't going to have to say a whole lot, I ain't going to have to do a whole lot, but people's just going to, it's going to, I mean, when, when I first met this guy with his uh, uh, ponytail, down to his butt and the handlebar mustache. There was just something, I mean, me and him didn't have a whole lot in common. I mean, he rode bikes. I tried to ride bikes, almost hit cars and wreck it. And I mean, it's a, we, I mean <laughs> we don't have a whole lot in common, but that, I, I was attracted to him because the Lord had something within him that I needed to get me to go and fulfill the purpose that, 
And, and believe me, guys, there's a whole town yeah. full of people who need you. Yeah. And I think for a long time, a fault that I have had is I've been trying to seek people out who are of my age or maybe even older, thinking that, you know, if I can, if I can, just, get the, if I can just get the coal miner in the door, if I can just get... You know, if I can just get the, 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 the basketball players at the park, if I can just get them in the door. But I think that's why the Lord is beginning to, to change my mind on some of these things because I don't think I need to seek mom and dad. I think I need to seek junior. You, ever, you guys ever notice how full this place gets when we have a children's program? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants to come and see their kids perform. Everybody wants to come see the, their kids succeed, whether they ever come to church on Easter morning or, or not. If, if Junior's doing something, no matter where Junior's at, that's how, that's how my dad got saved. That's how my dad got saved. By a little chick track that said, like father, like son, and it showed the father saying, oh, we got time for church later. We don't have to do that. You know, you, you, when you grow up, you can do all that. Flip a few more pages later, and, 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 and Satan's dragging the dad and the boy to hell, and it said, like father, like son. My dad was an awesome dad growing up. Taught me everything that I know when it comes to the natural things. Played catch with me in the backyard. Make sure that I succeeded in baseball. Make sure that I succeeded in and kickboxing, taekwondo, ground, I mean, everything that I'd done, he made sure that I was there when I needed to be there most of the time, about an hour early, and make sure that I succeeded in those things. And listen, that's one habit in this area that most dads are pretty good at. So, man, if we can, if we can get those kids... You know, and, I, and I'm not saying we're, you know, I'm not, we don't have some ulterior motive that if we can just get the kids, we get the parents. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is there's a reason that Jesus sat down and grabbed a little kid and set him upon his lap or her upon his lap and said, this is the kingdom. The kingdom is like an unto. There's a reason why Jesus looked at somebody and said, if you cause one of these little ones to stumble, You'd be better off just tying a millstone around your neck and throwing yourself off a cliff. There is something about these little ones. And not only that, but there's also a reason why you are called the children of God, sons of God, because each and every one of us are his kids. And we got a good, good daddy. And I truly believe, guys, that he is trying to impart in this season of our lives a burden to take this good news of the gospel of Christ out of these four walls and begin to watch a region become changed. Almost, I almost want to say in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. I don't think that this, I really don't believe that this is something that's going to ha I think that this is something that will last for years. But I don't believe it's going to be something that has to take a lot of years to implement. I think it's as simple as Ron going out and being at the gas station and seeing a, 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 a single mom and a little one there and Ron buying them a Coke and saying, Jesus loves you, buddy. And hand, just showing the love of Christ to people that we run into on a daily basis. Can we do that? Can we agree with Melanie and Melanie and say, I want it. And I know I usually, uh, I usually prophesy at the beginning of a uh, service, but uh, if there's somebody in here tonight that uh, you came in here, and we can call it expecting. We can call it wanting, desiring, however you want to put it, a prophetic word. You've been going through a little bit of, a little bit of something. And you come in here tonight thinking, saying, Lord, I, I, just, I just wish that you would speak to me on this certain issue. 
I am going to call you out. I even know who you are. I'm not going to call you out that way because this is what I heard in my spirit. I heard the Lord say that by faith you are asking this, and by faith you'll receive it. So if you were wanting a, a, a word from the Lord on a specific issue that you're going through or, you're, or that you're, you're trying to walk through, stand up. Amen. Now this is what I heard the Lord say. Abby, you can have it too. This, this is what I believe about prophetic words. I believe that uh, uh, prophetic words can, can be for Kelly and for Abby. And all of you can have it. All of you can receive it. Amen. But this is what I heard the, this is what I heard the Lord say. That was the craziest thing. Tori is going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Little Tang is going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Because me and her watched this 14 times when, the, when we was hanging out. It was a, a boss baby. And the, at, the, at, at one part of this movie, that, uh, the older brother's riding the bike. Remember, and they're, and they're, you know, it turns into a motorcycle and they're, they're doing their thing, but Boss Baby says this. He, he, he says, I'm going to hit a tree. And Boss Baby says, if you aim to fail or if you aim to succeed, you're going to get it. So the, what I heard the Lord say, though, was if you believe you're right or you believe you're wrong, you're right either way. And he said, major in the majors. And minor in the minors. All the major issues that's going on within your life right now, you take care of those. And all the minor things that's going on in your life, those are going to be what I, what I saw was a cup and it filled up and it began to overflow. And the overflow from the major things that's going on. Now, we're not talking about issues. We're talking about scripture. We're talking about study. We're talking about sitting in the presence. We're talking about worship. He said, I'm calling you now to a place of worship and to a place of prayer. I'm calling you to a place where you begin to know me and depend on me like you had never before. And as you do that and as you sit in my presence, it's almost as if the hills were laid low. All these things that you see as mountains in your life, all these things that you see as something that you yourself can't get past, the hills melt like wax in the presence of the Lord is what the word says. So just begin to sit in his presence, major in that major, and all the minors will be laid low. Father, I praise you tonight, and I thank you, Lord God, for a people who have a heart for the kingdom. I praise you, Lord God, for a people that not only have a heart for the kingdom, Father God, but we're not only going to be hearers of the word, Lord God, but we're going to be doers of the word. Father, I, I, I pray that you just put a, a commission upon us, Father God. Lord, for those of us who, who raised our hands at the, at the beginning of the service and says, I'll go. Lord, let us all come into agreement tonight and say, Lord, wherever, whenever, whoever, because, Father, I want to see it come to pass. I want to see your will done. I want to see my community changed. And as my community changed, Father God, as, just as you show me in the spirit as that water rolls out, it just begins to wash everything. Because that's what water does, Lord. It consumes everything that, is, that it touches. So, Father, I praise you. <laughs> and I thank you, Lord God. for a people who are going to move in you like never before, for a people who are going to depend on you like never before, a people who are going to come and find themselves in a place of trust in you, Father God, and that is faith with experience. That I, I praise you, Lord, that you're going to begin to give these people who are raising their hands and saying, I'll go and I'll do it. And yes, I want Indiana. You're going to begin to show them the miracles, Father God, of the word. You're going to begin to show them that signs, wonders, and miracles do follow those who believe. Signs, wonders, and miracles do follow those people who step out and step in to the presence and the glory. 
So, Lord, I praise you and I thank you for all these things, Lord God. And I say, Lord, let it be so. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen.